Welcome to our Tuesday evening Eucharist for Holy Week. Uh, as we continue to walk with our Lord to his cross. <clears throat> Tonight, the Gospel reading is about the Greeks coming to see Jesus. And we'll look at that significance in our homily. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Acknowledging that our lives fall below what Christ desires for us, and that we have betrayed his great love for us, we keep a moment of quiet <clears throat> and then confess our sins. Would you like to sit? Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. O keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame but I have put my trust in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And so our collect, the Lord be with you. Also with you. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now our readings. Bet Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength. The Lord says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Greeks, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, be on my lips and in my heart, that I may worthily proclaim his gospel. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went to tell Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said, it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. 
Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And why, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself? He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted high? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Holy Week is a very solemn time, almost a dismal time, and uh, certainly this last year has been a dismal year. Um, but for Jesus, on this occasion, a great shaft of light seemed to have pierced the gloom uh, as these Greeks have come seeking Jesus. Uh, the Greeks represent the non-Jewish people, and that includes us, of course, and they've asked to see Jesus. They're the first fruits of the harvest of Gentile believers, those who would eventually come to put their trust in the Lord, come to know God and the divine compassion and love. For Jesus, this is a great moment. He exults. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Yes, at last, his ministry is bearing fruit. Praise the Lord for that. And then comes a dramatic change of tone as Jesus points to the significance uh, of his impending death. Just as the grain of wheat must die if it is to bear a rich harvest, so he must die if his Father's will is to be fulfilled. He must die if the world is to be filled with the knowledge of God's love and God's name be glorified. Jesus, whatever else he was, was a fully human being. And the thought of crucifixion, which he realised was going to happen to him, must have been terrifying, unbearable. Should he pray to be spared that ordeal? In the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, he does pray to be spared, for the cup to be taken from him. But uh, not in John's Gospel. No, he says, never, not according to John's understanding of this. And why? Because his death and all that it signifies is the whole reason for Christ coming into the world. This is the hour for which his whole ministry has been a preparation. You will recall there are a number of uh, moments, dramatic moments, in the Gospel of John where it said his hour had not yet come. Jesus stopped things happening because his hour had not yet come. But now he sees that it has. Uh, and. Uh, this hour will bring glory to God because Jesus' death will be a sign that the ruler of this world, the power of evil, will be overcome. All that is contrary to God's will is destined to be overcome. That could be hard for us to take when we watch the news today or read the papers, the awful things that are happening all over the world and even bad things in our own country. 
And yet that is our Christian hope. That is what Christ came partly to proclaim. The ruler of this world will be overcome. All that is contrary to God's will is destined to be overcome. And our Lord's cross can't be separated from his resurrection. And in the fourth gospel, they are inseparable. It's in the dying of the grain that leads to the rich harvest of new life. Jesus then alludes to an incident in the Old Testament when the Jews were wandering in the desert after they had come out of Egypt. They're plagued by snakes and suffering from snake bites. So if you remember, Moses makes an image of a snake, fixes it to a pole and holds it up. And all who have been bitten can see that snake and so they find healing from the effects of the snake bites. And it's that incident that Jesus must have in mind when he says of himself in chapter 3, the Son of Man must be lifted up as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness so that everyone who has faith in him may in him possess eternal life. So now, in our Gospel reading, Jesus says, when I am lifted up, I shall draw all people to myself. As the pole with the serpent fixed to it brought healing to the Hebrews in the wilderness, so Jesus, nailed to the cross, will bring us our salvation in the wilderness of this, our tortured world. His crucifixion will bring wholeness. It will restore our at one with God, our atonement with our Heavenly Father. The stricken Jews in the wilderness had to look at, had to see the serpent on the pole. And those Greeks, they asked to see Jesus who would be lifted up. There is a difference between uh, looking and seeing. Many look at crucifixes at roadside shrines on the continent or in churches. Uh, how many good ladies have crucifixes round their necks and men as well? How many have crosses as earrings? Uh, lots of visitors when the churches are open, when pandemic's over and before it started, many went into churches and cathedrals and saw crucifixes, saw crosses. They looked, they saw, but how many saw the significance of those crosses? Who saw the significance of our Lord nailed to his cross? And how many saw or see and understand that it's actually a declaration of God's love towards us? How many recognise the crucifix as a glorious sign of God's power over sin, evil and death? When Christians see the cross of Jesus, we see not just a man dying in agony on a cross, we see through that to the sacrificial love of our Lord's self-offering in obedience to the Father for our sake. It's personal for us, each one of us. We see that the cross brings our ultimate wholeness and healing when we embrace that same sacrificial love because it's that love which is the foundation of Christ's kingdom, the secret of his realm. <clears throat> our Lord's sacrificial love overcomes the power of evil in us and the consequences of our sinfulness. His love breaks down the barriers which keep us from God. Many kingdoms have come and many kingdoms have gone. Some have come by the power of force, by be maintained by tyranny, but they have fallen and gone or will one day. Perhaps even our own kingdom, we think our kingdom of Great Britain is here forever, may not be one day, that may fall. Uh, but Christ's kingdom, his realm of sacrificial love will endure through all eternity because it isn't dependent on earthly power. It's not dependent on status or ambition. 
Christ's kingdom is a kingdom of hearts and minds in tune with the will of God and which reveals the eternal nature of God, our Creator and Heavenly Father. As we, the equivalent of those Greeks, contemplate our Lord's cross this Good Friday, let us pray that we may be drawn more deeply into its meaning for this pandemic-stricken world, for the Church and for ourselves. Let it speak to us in our hearts and draw us ever closer to our Lord as his willing disciples. I close with a prayer, a prayer of which I'm very fond. O Lord, our Saviour and God, whom nails could not hold to the cross but only love, grant that we who have received the fullness of your love may be ready to bear before the world the marks of your passion. You who are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so our prayers. Let us come to him who died that we might live and who intercedes for us continually before the Father. Lord Jesus, you embrace the cross that we might learn to give our lives for the sake of love. Give us grace to follow your sacrificial example. Lord, hear us. Innocent captive, you submitted to the judgment of sinners. We pray for all victims of injustice and for the integrity of all who exercise the law. Lord, hear us. In the hour of your death, you heard the penitent thief and opened the door of paradise. We pray for all prisoners and lawbreakers that their hearts may be turned and they experience renewal of life. Lord, hear us. Most merciful Saviour, you have known the pain of abandonment. We pray for all whom life seems hopeless, with none to turn to and are in despair. We also pray in silence for those near and dear to us who need our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, you love the church and gave up your own self for her. We pray for your church throughout the world, especially for Archbishop Justin, Pope Francis, the Ecumenical Patriarch, this diocese, and in Zimbabwe, the Church of the Resurrection that your church may minister faithfully and sacrificially in the service of your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, through your blood you have opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. May many come to you in faith and love this holy week. We remember before you the departed from our families, and from this congregation, those who die today, especially those who died unexpectedly or unprepared. May they rest in peace. And in the company of all the saints, we honour Mary, the mother of our Lord, saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus, Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you stand? Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Do you want to give out any notices, Father? No, I'll do the end. Right then. I'll try and remember. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Now we give you thanks because for our salvation Christ was obedient even to death on the cross. The tree of shame was made the tree of glory and where life was lost, there life has been restored. And now we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one revelation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Oh, there are, are many. We are one. Oh, we all share. Man of God, you 
way, the sin of the world. language of your choice and with sisters and brothers throughout the world as our saviour taught us so we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper.
We now say the post-communion hymn on your sheets. <clears throat> o saving victim, opening wide the gates of heaven to us below, our foes press on from every side, thine aid supply, thy strength bestow. All praise and thanks to thee ascend, for evermore blessed one in three. O grant us life that shall not end in our true native land with thee. Notices. Let's say the prayer for spiritual communion for those unable to be with us, realizing that some of you have not taken communion for a long time. God bless you as you continue the rest of this service now. Jesus, my Savior, I ask you to come into my heart and fill me with your love. Although I cannot physically join others to celebrate the Mass today, I desire to offer my thanksgivings and prayers in union with all who worship you, wherever they may be. And although I cannot receive you now sacramentally in the bread and wine of Holy Communion, still I desire to receive your body and blood spiritually and feed on that love that I may be united with you and with all your people in one communion and fellowship, your mystical body, the Church, now and ever. First of all, good evening. Thank you for being here. Sometimes when we seek wisdom, we don't really recognize it right in front of us. It took me a couple of years after becoming vicar here to recognize the wisdom of the man who's at the altar today. Uh, we represent different traditions, but we love the same Lord. I also share with him the fact that we're both getting older. And all I can say is, and if this is not self-serving, I hope, please don't hear it as that, but there is such wisdom in people who are of a goodly age and we are at our peril if we don't recognize it. So if you agree with me that the wisdom of Father Graham and all that he brings to this church in so many ways is a blessing to us all, please say with me, Amen. 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 That's our way of thanking you for celebrating tonight, and we know you'll be here throughout Holy Week. I remind you that tomorrow there's Stations of the Cross. I've counted you. There's 13 people here. You can all come back and do Stations of the Cross tomorrow but I do need some readers, 13 of them. I'm looking at you, Mr. Aslett, okay. And then on Thursday, Maundy Thursday, we have Mon the Maundy Thursday Mass of the Last Supper. Father Mark will be taking that service. I'll be here, but Father Mark will be taking that service. And that's followed by the, all the, the vigil of the, what we call like Gethsemane, recognizing Jesus' loneliness on that day. Then comes Friday from 1 o'clock until 3 o'clock. There are various different services happening, with the main service being at 2 p.m., the Liturgy of the Passion. Easter Day, well, it's a Holy Saturday, be a unique opportunity to share the joy of the season as we have rosary, what we call the joyful, the sorrowful mysteries, and we hope you can be here at that at 10 o'clock, led by Mike McCormick. Sunday, 10 a.m., what can I say? Can you ask, can I ask you how many have signed up so far? We don't know. Okay, better be a lot. Do your best to bring people along if you can and if they feel safe. We still must continue to pray for a remedy to this pandemic, and we pray God will continue to bless us as we try to serve him, even in the midst of it. Will you bow your heads for God's blessing? Christ crucified, draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you and those whom you love this night and always. Amen. Amen. Thanks for this beautiful day. Let us go forth.
Thanks be to God.